Hey everybody, how's it going? For today's video, we're going to take an up close and personal, in depth look at the newly refreshed 2014 Lexus CT200 HF Sport. And this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the CT. We'll power it up, show the engine, go over the hybrid powertrain, and talk about fuel economy and performance. Not to mention, show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Flo Lexus of Greensboro, located in Greensboro, North Carolina, for allowing me to come out and film the newly refreshed 2014 Lexus CT200 HF Sport. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Now, just like the rest of the Lexus lineup, the CT also features a standard smart key remote access system, so you can wirelessly lock and unlock the vehicle by just keeping the key fob in your pocket and locating the touch sensors on both the driver and passenger side door handles. To lock, just tap the little depressed portion up front, one beep indicates locking, then after waiting a second just grab the handle, there's also touch sensors located behind, and two beeps to indicate unlocking. The exterior is a deep gloss black known as Obsidian, featuring the premium New Lux leatherette upholstery finished in caramel with jet black accenting. Now along with that standard smart key system, the vehicle also features remote push button ignition. All you have to do to start, just go ahead and depress the brake pedal and wait for the blue button to light up green and then hit it to go. The CT features an electric assist, speed proportional rack and pinion steering system fed through an F-Sport specific and new for 2014 three-spoke leather wrapped steering wheel with perforated leather across each side and heavier grips up top, not to mention the special F-Sport badging in the bottom of the wheel. Color accent stitching around the wheel also give it a little bit more of a tailored look. As far as the gearbox, the CT's standard and only transmission is a single speed continuously variable automatic, fed through a unique gear selector mounted in the center console and wrapped in perforated leather for the F Sport models. All you have to do is just put your foot on the brake and tip the gear selector to either side to select the appropriate option. Once you put it in reverse, your backup camera automatically appears in the optional navigation screen, also with adjustable guidance lines. Another nice little feature a part of the hybrid synergy drive system is the B mode that you can activate while you're in drive. This is essentially a hybrid engine braking system. Hybrids in this particular class typically have smaller brakes because with the brake re energy regeneration system that's taken some of the load necessary to help build up the charge for the battery. But if you're on long steep grades or in areas where you need more traction like snow or icy situations, you can put it into the B mode and it's a little bit less efficient, it uses a little bit more of the power and even some of the electric power, but it provides that extra stopping power that you need so you're not having to constantly ride the brakes. In the center console there's also a drive mode selector, Eco, Normal, and Sport. Normal is your everyday driving mode, basically the balance between the two. Eco actually relaxes the throttle a little bit and gears the car for a little bit more fuel economy and relaxed performance. Sport actually dials up the steering resistance a little bit more, it doesn't change the ratios but it gives it a tighter feel. Not to mention increase in throttle response, adding the tachometer to the left hand side of the speedometer cluster and illuminating the backlit gauges red. There's even an EV mode for some brief low speed electric driving. For 2014, you also have the ability to turn the traction control completely off if desired. So we're going to flip on the automatic projector LED accent and headlamps, fog lamps, and the hazards. Naturally, all four windows are fully automatic, and a pretty cool thing that adds to the overall refined feeling and quietness of the interior is that you'll notice when the windows are rolling down and up, it'll slow down right before it gets to the bottom and its closed position. You notice it a little bit more when it's coming up. It makes a nice, quiet, seamless transition into its holding. And we're going to check out the exterior. It 
also noticed the vehicle chime a few times, letting you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. The CT200H was first launched back in 2011 as an all-new, youth-inspired, economy-minded hatchback, representing the lowest-priced model of the Lexus portfolio. For 2014, though, the CT receives a first refresh, primarily updating the styling to mesh the latest design languages. F-Sport models also receive some subtle changes that dial up the sporty styling a bit further than last year. In its first few years of production, the CT has had some great success so far, in the United States but especially in the European markets, where hatchbacks are a staple of the automotive marketplace, representing a quarter of the global sales. Underneath, the CT rides on Toyota's MC platform, which is shared between the Toyota Corolla and the Scion TC. This same platform also provided the basis for the since discontinued four-door Lexus HS250 hybrid. Unlike the HS, the CT carries a more compact powertrain, very much resembling what you would find in a Toyota Prius. The CT makes its mark though in how it drives. It features a tighter suspension tuning setup that gives it a more sporty handling profile to help back up its looks. F-Sport models feature a little bit further tuning, but just as an example, the strut brace up front actually has integral dampers that's designed to reduce vibration while adding some front end stiffness. The vehicle is front wheel drive. The 168 cell battery pack resides in the rear of the vehicle, and in efforts of keeping the floor low, the car uses a multi-link suspension outback. Advantages not only include packaging, but also handling compared to a simple torsion beam like what's found in the Corolla. So what really has changed for 2014? While it may not look like it at first glance, the CT has undergone a bunch of subtle changes. For starters, the front end is all new, now adopting the spindle grille seen in the latest offerings with chrome upper portion and satin metallic trim below. Of course, the signature blue highlighted badging for hybrid models remains unchanged. F-Sport models replace the center section with glossy dark mesh. The repositioned fog lamps also have a new surround in the bottom fascia, which have a blacked out treatment for F-Sports. LED headlamps are also available and if equipped are automatically paired with LED fog lamps in addition to the standard LED tail lamps and LED license plate lights. The side profile really hasn't changed much, but the rear fascia is now lowered by about an inch, with a black diffuser and L-shaped reflector surrounds. While all CTs do receive new, larger spoilers with integrated air diverters, F-Sports now feature a standard black roof, along with a revised antenna, adding a bit of contrast. One of my favorite things about the CT in general is really its styling. It's attractive, handsome, and refined looking overall. I've always thought the CT was an attractively styled car. The lines are handsome and give off a refined look through its combination of sharp edges and subtle curves. Even in the base trim, it looks like a premium vehicle that gives off a little bit of attitude, especially when it comes to the rear with a projecting hatch, slender rear window, and dark tinted tail lamps. Visibility is facilitated out back with small windows mounted in the C pillars. The F-Sport, catering to its name, has an upgraded set of the standard 17 by 7 inch, 5 twin-spoke alloy wheels with an edgy machined face and specific dark grey inner spokes. Optional 5-spoke Trident wheels are also available. They're wrapped in 215-45 Michelin Primacy MXM4 Green X all-season tires. In braking performance, the CT features 10-inch ventilated discs up front, while the rear consists of larger 11-inch solid discs with single-piston sliding calipers clamping down on each rotor. With this setup, the CT has been tested to stop from 60 miles an hour in an average of 120 feet. As far as the suspension, it's fully independent and features McPherson struts in the front and a trailing arm multi-link suspension out in the back. All wheels have coil springs and monotube dampers in addition to front and rear stabilizer bars. Overall length is 170.1 inches with a width of 69.5 inches and a height of 56.7 inches riding on a 102.4 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight as you see here is around 3,278 pounds. So we're going to pop the hood. The CT is a series parallel hybrid powered by a combination gasoline electric powertrain. On the gas side is an all-aluminum Atkinson Cycle 1.8 liter 4-cylinder with double overhead camshafts, 16 valves and variable intake valve timing. Fuel is delivered via port injection, while a fuel-saving auto start-stop feature is standard. It has a compression ratio of 13 to 1 and a 5400 RPM redline. On the electric side is a 60 kilowatt AC permanent magnus synchronous electric motor. 
paired with a nickel metal hydride battery pack rated at 1.3 kilowatt per hour. The engine itself produces 98 horsepower at 5200 rpm and 105 pound-feet of torque at 4000 rpm. The electric motor generates 80 horsepower and 153 pound-feet of torque on its own, but with the battery pack generating 36 horsepower, the total system output is around 134 horsepower. This translates to 0 to 60 times of just under 10 seconds, while quarter mile times are achieved in an average of 17.6 seconds at 78.8 miles per hour. Top speed is limited to around 113 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, with a 9.9 .9 gallon tank, the CT is actually able to run on regular gas and not premium, which is a big benefit in cost savings. EPA estimates range between 43 miles to a gallon in the city and 40 on the highway. The interior of the CT emulates the same modern, stylish vibe as the exterior with top-notch build quality for the class. Over the years, materials, ergonomics, and technology have also seen improvements. All of the essential touch points are padded, while much of the switch gear is now adorned with bright work. Satin silver also accents various interior trim pieces. The upper portion of the door panel features all of the soft padded trim with color accent stitching. Your power windows power locks are located on the door, whereas your power mirrors are on the dash. You also have a bit of storage with a water bottle holder. As far as the seating, it's exactly what you would expect out of a sportier Lexus. It's pretty good balance between comfort and support overall, whereas the bolsters aren't super huge, but they are nice enough to give you a little bit of extra grip if you decide to take a corner a little sharply. Attention to detail is also pretty good with the color accent stitching, and keep in mind these are the standard seating surfaces. Full leather upholstery as well as heated seats are also available. They're fully powered with two-way power lumbar, as well as adjustable seat belts and headrest. Aluminum scuff plates, logoed floor mats, as well as aluminum sport pedals for the F-Sport model. The steering wheel is manual tilt telescoping as standard. Off to the left you have your power mirrors, interior lighting dimmer, as well as activation of your parking sensors. Down below you have standard knee airbags, whereas the vehicle is also available with an adaptive cruise as well as forward collision warning system. The speedometer is also padded and finished off in a black headliner. Now, just being the nature of the vehicle, a hybrid does not rev up like a traditional vehicle would. But you can manually activate the engine by depressing the gas pedal if it's not currently running to charge the battery. Good, shut her up. Beautifully tight, solid sounding doors, just as you'd expect. And take close note how the window slows up, making a nice quiet transition. The new CT features an improved standard Lexus premium audio system with six speakers and an optional navigation system with upgraded screen located in the dash and the new Lexus remote touch interface. The screen is now a fixed, slimmer unit mounted right in the top of the dash. Satellite radio and HD radio are standard as well as smartphone integration with the Lexus app suite. The cloth lined A pillars with side curtain airbags, grip handles up top for all four passengers, little card holder, and padded visors with vanity mirrors and illumination. Your rear view mirror is also auto dimming with three position garage home link. In the top stack you have the microphone for your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, automatic sunroof controls, interior illumination as well as reading lamps, and activation of your SOS emergency roadside assistance. There's also a padded sunglass container towards the edge. Sunroof controls are really quite simple. Just press it and hold it for a second and it goes back completely automatic. There's also a little window flicker that pops up. Nice and quick.
Now, like I said, the Lexus Inform system is really quite simple to use if you're familiar with the functions of a computer mouse. The Lexus Remote Touch Controller in the center console almost mimics the action of a computer mouse. You just use one or two fingers and scroll around and push down when you select the correct option. There's also a haptic feedback mechanism built in that gives feedback through the controller to where you can make an appropriate selection. The home button on the remote controller brings up a little summary screen. So your energy consumption, radio, as well as navigation. Or in the top right hand corner here, you can customize. Change the layout, so if you want some other things to display instead of what's on currently, you can. So right now we're on the system main menu where you can access anything from your radio and media settings to the Lexus app suite, climate control data, and your navigation. Using the remote touch in the middle, you can scroll through and feel the haptic feedback as you select through the different options. Just push down to make a selection like I told you earlier. As far as the climate control settings, this particular vehicle comes standard with a dual zone electronic automatic climate control system. You can control it from the screen here or via the manual controls right beneath the radio. As far as doing it within the screen, your temperature, off either side, different zones, fan speed, one touch automatic, and off. Fairly simple. Navigation, with real-time traffic updates, zoom in and out, set manual points of interest, and your destination input. All pretty simple. Set a home position as well as favorite locations. Address, points of interest. And emergency assistance. The Lexus App Suite is a smartphone based integration system where you can link up things like Bing, Pandora Internet Radio, as well as some other things like Yelp, restaurant guides, from finding movie tickets, and more. Automatically synced when you register your phone with the system. Information, real time weather updates powered by the Weather Channel, with an interactive radar. Definitely pretty nifty. Current weather, extended forecasts. Fuel consumption. Averages and check the energy usage. And your traffic updates. It also has a pretty cool thing where it actually predicts the traffic every so often. Lexus Insider is kind of like an update system where it actually sends messages and everything like that so you can learn how to use specific features of the vehicle and more. System setup, all of the personalizable options of the vehicle, so you can customize all of the settings. There's just a little bit of rain that started outside, so you might hear a little bit of pitter-patter in a second. But your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it'll automatically ask you to pair if you haven't done so already, and list the different phones that are set up with the system. Store numbers, call history, favorites, and an integrated dialing pad, all paired with your voice recognition system so you can voice dial. Your different media options, this is what we're currently on right now, and that includes things like your um, Bluetooth hands-free streaming of audio, CD, iPod, auxiliary, USB integration, and there's a full list of all of your audio sources, including your internet radio. You can also reorder the different um, icons. A lot of functionality to it. Within the media screen, it shows whatever song that you're playing, artist, um, playlist information, as well as the particular media option, as well as album artwork if you have any available, powered through Grace Note. Repeating and shuffling songs, pausing, various radio settings, all of your sound adjustments, include speed compensated volume, and browsing the songs. Kind of like using a big integrated iPod. And as we continue down the center console, like I said, the vehicle also has a dual zone electronic automatic climate control setup that you can control either down here or from the inform system. It might be easier down here, especially while driving. 
but you have your temperature adjustments on either side, air filtrating, as well as a recycling system, front and rear defrost, and your fan speed in different zones. Digital clock located in the middle there. As we continue down the very unique flowing center console, it's also accented in the stitch trim with white color accent stitching. And up top here, you have some more controls for your radio, including your in-dash CD player, going between your different presets, track and rewind, as well as your different radio and media modes. Tune and scroll, so you can go between the different radio stations as well as scroll through different playlists of songs within your CD or media device. Your drive mode selector, of course, like we talked about earlier, as well as the heated seat controls for both the driver and passenger. The remote touch controller, two cup holders, and open that up to reveal a 12 volt power outlet, as well as your iPod auxiliary integration with a USB input. The little cubby up there can be used to store something like a cell phone. Continue across the back, and you also have a padded center console with a modest amount of space. As far as the steering wheel, your radio controls, hands-free telephone and voice commands are located on the left-hand side. After the beep, please say a command. Please say help at any time for additional instructions. Help. Help. You are in the shortcut menu. The shortcut menu contains common voice commands such as call John Smith. In addition, other menus commands are supported on this screen. To use voice commands, please wait for the beep, then say a command. You can push the talk button at any time to interrupt the prompts. To cancel voice recognition, please push and hold the talk switch. Voice recognition has been canceled. So it's a nice, pleasant voice, easy to use, and you can essentially control the entire thing from just using the voice recognition system. So if you can practice the commands, it's a pretty convenient hands-free way of doing things, especially if you're going down the road. The right-hand side of the steering wheel houses your display controller for the digital driver information system located on the right-hand side of the screen. Hitting it, you can go through the various vehicle settings, energy transfer, instantaneous and other fuel economy data, cruise control down below, automatic rain sensing windshield wipers and controls for your rear wiper, as well as all of your lighting and turn signals. Like you saw earlier, your power mirrors and interior lighting dimmers located to the left. The gauge cluster itself is also quite cool. Like I said, in sport mode, it lights up red with a tachometer off to the left. Put it back in normal or eco mode and your energy data reappears on the left hand side. The eco section is basically your everyday cruising. You're not accelerating too hard and you're driving with fuel economy in mind. Charge indicates that the vehicle is actually working to help replenish the batteries, and power is if you're burying the accelerator, if you're passing on the freeway or coming in an on-ramp, something like that. You'll be using more fuel and electricity in power mode, but in eco mode it does light up blue when you're driving economically. Alrighty, let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle. Luckily, I filmed everything else before it started raining. <laughs> The back seat of the CT is pretty much typical of what you would expect in this particular vehicle size class. It is a little bit of an intimate cabin, but people under 6 feet can definitely be comfortable. Unlike the front doors, the upper portion is more of a plasticky material, but all of the touch points where it matters the most is still covered by soft touch material. I'll hop in the back seat and show you a little bit more about it in just a second, but it's also finished in the soft, premium new luxe material in the caramel and jet black helping continue the sporty and refined aspect. Another nice little thing is if you need more cargo space out of the rear, the seats fold 60-40 split, so you can just release them and then fold them completely flat. Like I said, the back seat of the CT can definitely be a comfortable place for people under six feet. If you're much taller, you might want to watch your head on top of the door frame here. Just like the front, the rear doors close with a nice, solid, reassuring thud to them. And overall, initial comfort impressions would say that it's definitely above average for this particular vehicle size and class as far as hatchbacks are concerned. The back seat has a good amount of back support, a little bit of extra lumbar, which I particularly like. And across the sides, you also have a little bit more definition with extra side bolstering to help give you a little bit more lateral grip. Now, as far as interior room, I'm about 5'10", 5'11". And with a comfortable seating position for myself in front of me, I probably have 
I would say a couple inches of headroom and maybe about an inch to inch and a half of leg space depending on where you put your legs. Now the seats actually cut in a little bit here giving you a little bit more wiggle room but you have a little bit more across the sides as the seats kind of do this pattern. So it sticks out a little bit more in the middle here than at the edges so the most comfortable position is going to be kind of sitting a little bit spread out like this. Now, you do have pockets on the seat backs here, rear panels up top with coat hooks, illumination, and side curtain airbags to the rear. Another nice thing is that you can sit three people back here, but the middle person will probably be somewhere a little bit smaller. Sitting three adults back here probably would be a little bit tight. So, let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Now, because the CT is the hatchback, it does have its practicality advantages as far as stowing larger items. All in all, it's around 14.3 cubic feet of space in total, but you can fold the back seats down and remove that cargo cover and expand the cargo space all the way to the front. Out back, you also have illumination as well as some cargo tie-downs. Lexus embroidered floor mat, and down below, you do have a bit of storage. Underneath that is the vehicle spare tire and a first aid kit. The passenger seat has similar adjustments to what you would find on the driver's seat, only without the extra power lumbar. You do also have a locking glove box with a good amount of space. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2014 Lexus CT200H F Sport. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.